Hello, Neil here, and today I will mostly be making... What was I making? Ah, yeah, garlic and nettle soup. I saw someone online making it. So I've come down here to the local riverside to see what I can see and see what I can pick and give the dogs a bit of exercise also. So, let's crack on. Oh, got some nice new nettles here. I'll pick a few of those, I think. I'll just put my gloves on. I'm just picking the young, the little young shoots in the middle. We should put some gloves on. young shoots. So what else do we need for our soup? Well, wild garlic and there's plenty of it around here. But again, there's other things growing alongside it. So if you can pick it a stem at a time and you rule out any problems, let's have a look at this stuff now. Right, some nice patches of wild garlic here. This stuff's almost starting to flower, you can see in the middle, these little buds coming through. If you're in any doubt, just pick a stem and give it a sniff. That's definitely garlic. Right, let's pick some of this. Normally I'd come down with a carry a bag and pick a load, wash it, freeze it. I will be doing that at some point, but for today, I'm just gonna take what I need to make my soup. If I'm ever out and about and I don't have a bag on me and I see something I would like to try, I always have dog poo bags, as long as you don't have the scented ones you'll be all right and plus the other thing is you can hook them through your belt and have them hanging all around your waist if you like you wouldn't want to grab a handful of him would you Ooh, he's gone. so this here this here Lords and ladies, don't be picking that, whatever you do. If you munch on that, it'll be like having a thousand paper cuts in your mouth. And if you're ever caught short and need to wipe your backside, don't use that. Nasty. I've had some quite nice things along this riverside. Just since autumn, really, I've had some woodier mushrooms some velvet shank mushrooms and even some scarlet elf cups at the moment I'm just concentrating on garlic I think I know there are other things in there but I'm, I'm still too much of a novice to start picking other things sometimes you chomp down on something and go uh oh was I supposed to eat that which I did with ground elder the other day very distinctive taste of sort of carrot um, but yeah, could have easily been something else, so just be careful. Make sure you do your homework before you chew things. There you go. The butterbur plant. It's not an alien. I think it's, it was brought in probably by migrants from Asian countries, possibly. Japanese call it the, the, the Fuki, I believe, F-U-K-I, Fuki. I think you need to bury it in potash or something like that to prepare it, traditionally. But it does have medicinal uses. Oh, it's turned out nice. It's a bit chilly this morning, a bit of an icy wind. 
as you can see, I'm dressed for winter. <sighs> Got a bit of a sweat on now. Although well, that doesn't take much nowadays. There you go. Nettles, garlic. There's a rather large patch of lords and ladies. I know it looks tempting. Green, nice salad veg. Don't be tempted. And just be careful not to pick it when you pick it amongst it to get what the nice things. You can tell the difference. It's got these little tails. Little tails on the leaves. But when they're fresh little new leaves, they can be mistaken for the wild garlic, although there doesn't seem to be any growing here. There's the wild garlic. There's the lords and ladies. There's your hemlock water dropwort. You don't want to be eating that either, because that's probably one of the most poisonous plants we've got in this country for foragers. Well, I am putting some gloves on because this is all mixed together and I'm a bit of a wuss. I don't like stings. Right. Nettles. You can see I've just picked the nice fresh ones off the tops. So just give them a wash in some salty water to get any bugs out. And also have a rush through and make sure there's nothing in here that shouldn't be. Any of those lords and ladies we talked about yesterday, any of that uh, hemlock that was in amongst the nettles and the garlic. So, I mean, to be honest, I went through this, I didn't find anything that shouldn't be there. Here I've got some uh, some flowers, some of the few that are already open. I'll use these for garnish at the end. I've got some unopened ones as well. I might use them for a different recipe. So we've got loads of garlic, loads of nettles, and some nice garnish for the end. So let's sort our other ingredients now. Right, next step. Oh, hello. Next step, um, a carrot, two sticks of celery, an onion, and a leek. Um, finely slice, peel and slice, uh, dice. I'm gonna give this a bit of a wash first. The best way to wash a leek is just to put your knife in, bring it to the end, turn it around, do it again, keep it touched to the bottom, open that up and you'll find soil and stuff in there. So just give that a quick rinse under the tap. Okay, I will have to peel the tatie as well. You could probably put it in with the skin on, but let's do this right, shall we? Right, good night. Chop it through. Just keep chopping through, move your fingers. When you get to the end, We all have our favourite knives. This is my favourite chopping knife. Okay. Do the same with the carrot. Through the middle. Into four. Put them together. And use the rocking motion of your knife. Just cut that through. Careful with your as much as I'm not really a fan of Jamie Oliver, he did say that magic word once, which is rustique, which means don't be too fussed about how you chop it up. Doesn't matter. At the end of this, I'm going to puree it anyway. So again, just roughly chop, but small enough that it's not going to take forever to cook. So just put them quite small, but not tiny. I'm 
my, my favourite knife for onion is this tiny little thing, serrated. Again, don't be too fussed about making a fantastic job of it. Just get all this chopped up and into your bowl, ready for the next step. Okay. I didn't forget the potato. Just chuck it anywhere you like really. It doesn't really matter does it. Just it's all gonna get pureed. Potato won't take long to I've got a hair there. Won't take long to cook. Just chop these through. And then that's all the chopping done. Right, next step is to get the pan on the heat. I'm just going to put this on full blast just for now. I want a big lump of butter, as much as you want. I like butter. And you want to pour in well, a few tablespoons of rapeseed oil. Get that melted down. Before that starts to burn, I'm going to fire all the veggies. You want to hear that nice sizzle. Nice sizzling sound, that's all we want. Throw in my potato as well. Give that a good stir around. Get it all coated in the oil and the butter. So we're going to turn that heat down. Cover it with a lid and let it sweat. Make it sweat for about 15 to 20 minutes. Whatever you do, don't just ignore this. Come back every couple of minutes, give it a stir, make sure the vegetables are not catching on the bottom, nothing is burning, adjust the heat. If you think it's too hot, turn it down. You don't want those vegetables to colour, you just want them to sweat. We're not frying here. Right, I've given that 20 minutes. We'll come back to it. As you can see, it's nice and slimy, reduced down, nice and soft. So what we do now is we're going to add in some vegetable stock. I've got some here. So, it, that's a litre. All right, if you want to put more in, just wait and see how thick this is going to become. Let's give it a good stir around. But we're not finished there, because now I'm going to put the lid back on and leave this to simmer for 10 minutes. Right, I've given that rather longer than uh, the 10 minutes simmering. Because it's a guideline, isn't it? it? Depends on how big you cut your veg as to how long it takes to cook them. So let's just take a bit of carrot out maybe. That will be the hardest thing. If you can mash it with the back of the fork, yeah. So that's all pretty much cooked. Right. Now, in with the nettles. On with the glove. I still don't want to steam myself. So these kind of go in towards the end because all the nutrients in them will uh, be destroyed if you overcook them. Especially if you boil them. I'm going to put a, this in, in a few batches and we'll stir around. I've got about 10 ounces of nettles. Wherever that, it's about 300 grams, I think. Put them in, stir them around, add some more. To be honest, I still didn't quite have enough nettles for this recipe. I think I've only got about 8 ounces, but hey. I've never made it before, so we'll see how it turns out. Just collect some more next time. Just keep adding those in, stirring them in. Don't turn the heat down, it's only simmering. And I made sure there was no bugs or anything in amongst these nettles. I'm now going to add my garlic. So this is about seven ounces of this. 
um, what's that, 200 grams of my wild garlic. Just the leaves, but it doesn't matter about the stalks. Just cram it in there. It doesn't take long to cook. Again, you don't want to overcook this. You don't want to destroy the flavour. I'm going to turn up the heat until it starts to bubble, and then I'm going to turn it down and simmer it just for a couple of minutes. Now that's come back up to the boil. Um, you can see it's already reduced right down. All those leaves, it's like cooking spinach, they go to pretty much nothing. So, turn that back down to about three. Ooh, it's bubbling away. Cover it. Two minutes, only two minutes. Right, it's time to see this soup really come together. At the minute, it just looks, well, it's pretty colourful. Let's just see what happens when I put my mixer in. Here we go. And you can have this as, as chunky or as pureed as you like. But the whole point of it is to combine all those flavours. For me, I think that's probably about right. You can still see the little flecks of green in there. But it's not too chunky. We have combined most of the flavours. Now, I haven't added any seasoning to this yet, so... This is the first time I'm going to season it, apart from the... The stock, obviously, which is a couple of stock cubes. I'm going to put a generous pinch of salt. Quite a lot of black pepper. Black pepper is great in soups. And about three tablespoons of milk to finish it off. Okay. Just give that a stir. I'm going to pop it back on the heat on a very low temperature, because you do not want to destroy all those nutrients. A couple of minutes and we're done. And that's us just about done. So, just gonna pop some in a bowl. Look at that lovely and fresh and green and lots of natural ingredients in that. I'm just going to garnish that now. Remember those little flowers that I kept before of the garlic? These have a nice peppery, garlicky, oniony taste. I'm going to pop those on the top and give it a taste. Um, it tastes it tastes of woodland it tastes of natural things be really nice with a crusty cob so that's your wild garlic and nettle soup first time I've made it um, I'm quite pleased with that mm. yeah lovely Right, that's it from me. Till the next time, enjoy your soup and good night.